Brittany Howard appeared to embody the perfect suburban lifestyle. For 39 years, she and her husband Jack had built a comfortable life together. Their mornings followed a familiar routine. Jack would head off to work at a prestigious firm, while Brittany lingered in the cozy kitchen, sipping coffee and contemplating her next volunteer project or painting. Their home was filled with an atmosphere of laughter and tranquility. Jack was hardworking and unfailingly reliable, always dedicated to his job and ensuring that they never lacked for anything. This allowed Brittany the freedom to pursue her interests. Yet beneath the surface of her seemingly happy life, something within her began to shift. What once was a life she cherished began to feel routine, even dull at times. Brittany longed for something more, something thrilling, something risky. At first, she sought excitement in small, seemingly innocent ways. She started a new workout program at the gym that challenged her and enrolled in classes that reignited a spark of excitement within her, eventually leading to more clandestine escapades. During one such adventure, she crossed paths with Billy Ross, Jack's boss. Their first encounter happened at a corporate event, one of those monotonous dinners where wives were expected to smile and engage in light conversation. But Billy stood out from the rest. His charisma captivated Brittany. His confidence and sharp wit made her laugh in a way she hadn't in ages. Billy, in turn, noticed her too. At first, it was just a glance across the table, a brief connection. As the evening wore on, their conversations became more personal. He complimented her dress, her smile, her poise. It was intoxicating. Her heart raced whenever he was near. What began as innocent flirting quickly evolved into something more. They started meeting for coffee, then lunch, carefully keeping their encounters away from prying eyes. Before long, it wasn't enough. Glances turned into touches, touches into embraces, and soon they found themselves embroiled in a full-blown affair. Brittany was keenly aware of the wrongness of it all. Guilt began to stir within her, but she pushed it aside, convincing herself that this was a necessary escape from the monotony of life with Jack. She felt she deserved this thrill, this break from the routine. Deep down, she knew the reality. She was betraying the man who had given her everything. To Billy, the affair was nothing more than a game. He took pleasure in seducing his subordinate's wife asserting his dominance in yet another area of his life. He saw Brittany as just another trophy, a means to satisfy his desires. He regarded Jack as a weak man, someone to be looked down upon, and by extension, Brittany was merely a distraction, a way to amuse himself. Brittany ignored the emptiness that followed each encounter, the way Billy's eyes would glaze over when their time together was done. She convinced herself that she could keep this affair hidden, that Jack would never find out, and that no one would get hurt. But with each passing week, the cracks in her seemingly perfect life grew deeper. The excitement that had once empowered her transformed into a constant source of anxiety. Guilt, which she had tried to bury, resurfaced, along with a deeply buried fear that her carefully constructed life was on the brink of collapse. Unbeknownst to Brittany, Jack had started noticing the signs. Subtle at first almost imperceptible. In the early stages, Jack Howard chalked them up to the typical fluctuations characteristic of a long marriage. In conversations, Brittany seemed a little preoccupied, often lost in thought. She laughed less frequently, and when she did, it felt forced. Jack noticed she was spending more time away from home, at the gym, with friends, or on errands that seemed to take longer than before. His curiosity was piqued by her phone. Brittany had never been one to keep her phone close at hand, often leaving it on the kitchen counter or in the living room. But now, things had changed. She started turning off notifications or leaving the room when a call came in. Once, Jack reached for her phone to check the time, and Brittany practically jumped out of her seat to snatch it from him. Is everything okay? Jack asked, raising an eyebrow in concern. Just work stuff, Brittany replied hastily. She forced a smile, but her eyes darted around, avoiding his. You know how it is with charity events. There's always something going on. Feeling a heaviness in his gut, Jack nodded. He tried to brush it off, telling himself that Brittany was just busy, maybe a little stressed. But then came the late nights. At first, there were just a few evenings when Brittany didn't return until after midnight. 
She claimed to have had a meeting or lost track of time while catching up with a friend over coffee. But as the excuses piled up, they became less convincing. Jack began to notice the lingering scent of another man's cologne on her clothes, not his. After Brittany had slipped into bed well past midnight, Jack lay awake, staring at the ceiling, unable to shake the unease that had taken hold of him. Now, he felt a growing chasm between them. What was once filled with affection and joy was now marred by silence and uncertainty. His heart ached, and a nagging voice in his head hinted at the truth he wasn't ready to face. Yet Jack was not one to jump to conclusions. He needed certainty, tangible proof, before he could even entertain the thought of his wife's potential infidelity. Jack began to watch her closely, noting every subtle change, every questionable action. When Brittany started taking late-night calls, she would leave the room and speak in hushed tones. Pretending to be asleep, Jack remained vigilant, catching snippets of conversations that twisted knots in his stomach. One evening, when Brittany said she was meeting a friend, Jack decided to follow her. Carefully driving at a distance, he trailed her to a restaurant on the other side of town. After parking his car, Jack watched from inside his vehicle as Brittany entered the building. A few moments later, Billy Ross arrived. They exchanged a long, intimate embrace that pierced Jack's heart like a knife. Seated in a secluded booth, they laughed joyfully, leaning into each other. Jack's knuckles turned white as he gripped the steering wheel tighter. Paralyzed, he observed them through the restaurant window. The harsh and painful reality was sinking in. His wife was having an affair with his boss. When Jack returned home that evening, he decided not to engage in conversation. Instead, he greeted her with a forced smile, maintaining a steady tone. Did you have a good time? he asked. Yes, she replied, avoiding his gaze. It was nice to catch up. As soon as she went upstairs to bed, Jack stayed in the living room, his thoughts racing. The pain was intense, but underneath it, a firm resolve was beginning to take shape. Confronting her would lead to chaos and emotional turmoil. Moreover, he risked losing control, and Billy might strike back. Jack needed a strategy now, something methodical so that both of them would face the consequences of their betrayal. The entire next day, he silently gathered evidence. Discreetly, while Brittany was taking a shower, he accessed her phone, taking pictures of texts and call logs. Now he tracked her every departure from the house and followed her whenever he could. With each new discovery, his initial hurt transformed into an overwhelming rage. Jack realized he couldn't act impulsively. He needed to wait for the right moment to execute his plan. As he became more withdrawn, Brittany noticed the change but didn't question it. She assumed he was just busy with work, perhaps a bit distant, but she had no interest in finding out the details. Meanwhile, Jack was consumed with preparing for the impending storm. The summer evening seemed calm but there was a palpable tension in the Howard household. The house was filled with the aroma of roasting chicken, a special dish that Brittany had thoughtfully prepared for Jack's birthday. Yet, as she stirred the sauce, her thoughts drifted away from her husband and focused on Billy Ross. She had planned this evening with particular care. After dinner, Brittany instructed Billy to come over, a bold decision that thrilled and terrified her in equal measure. The mere thought of her lover entering her home and confronting her husband sent a shiver down her spine. The plan was reckless, but that was what made it so enticing. As she cleared the table, she glanced at the clock. Each ticking second brought Billy closer. When Jack walked through the door, he appeared as he always did, calm and composed, with no hint of trouble. Greeting Brittany, he kissed her on the cheek and thanked her for the dinner she had prepared. The aroma is amazing, he remarked as he sat down at the table. His voice was steady, his demeanor unchanged, but there was a hollowness in his eyes that Brittany didn't notice, lost as she was in her own thoughts and the excitement of the evening ahead. The two dined in near silence, the only sound being the soft clinking of silverware. Brittany's thoughts drifted far away, recalling her last encounter with Billy and pondering what this night might bring. She kept glancing at the clock, her foot tapping nervously under the table. Each minute felt like an eternity in her anticipation and anxiety. 
Noticing her unease, Jack chose to remain silent. His gaze was full of quiet tension as he methodically cut his chicken, chewed and swallowed, never taking his eyes off Brittany. Her face was tight with tension, her smile strained and her eyes avoided his. He had the sense that her mind was elsewhere, occupied by someone else. The thought weighed heavily on him, but he suppressed his emotions, focusing on the plan he had been developing for weeks. And then, the doorbell rang. The sound echoed through the room, causing Brittany to startle. With a racing heart, she excused herself, mumbling something about dessert. Jack's expression remained unchanged. As she approached the door, he noticed her steps quicken, and he took a deep breath to steady himself. And there, as Brittany opened the door, stood Billy with his usual smug grin. He skipped all pleasantries. Without hesitation, he approached Brittany, wrapped his arm around her waist, and kissed her passionately. Brittany's heart pounded at his boldness, and she felt a mixture of fear and anxious excitement. Happy birthday, Jack! Billy called over Brittany's shoulder as they entered the living room, a mocking tone in his voice. Tonight your wife will be with me, period. Good luck keeping your job, you idiot. The words hung in the air like a poisonous fog. Billy exuded arrogance, his self-satisfied smile infuriating. Brittany forced herself to laugh, trying to match his bravado, but inside she was trembling. This wasn't how she had envisioned the situation. Brittany had expected the thrill of danger, a rush of adrenaline. Instead, she felt a wave of nausea. Turning around, Jack slowly rose, his movements deliberate. His face was ghostly pale but his expression remained calm and composed. Jack took in the scene, his gaze sweeping over Billy and Brittany, absorbing the tension in the room. The heavy, oppressive silence stretched on. And then Jack broke it, his voice low but resolute. In that case, Brittany, why don't you go get the dessert? Startled by his tone, Brittany flinched. She hesitated for a moment, glancing at Billy, who merely shrugged and smirked. Of course, she replied, her voice slightly trembling. Eager to escape the tense atmosphere, she turned and hurried to the kitchen, leaving Jack and Billy alone in the living room. A silent tension lingered between them. Jack's eyes never left Billy, who looked back at him with smug confidence. Neither moved, neither spoke, the silence heavy and seemingly endless. Finally, Jack broke it. You're a bold man, Billy. Billy's grin grew even wider. Jack, I'm just here to have fun. No hard feelings, okay? Jack's expression didn't change. He nodded, then turned on his heel and left the room without saying a word. A flicker of doubt crossed Billy's face, but he quickly brushed it aside, feeling confident in his position. At least, that's what he believed. Meanwhile, Brittany sat on the edge of the couch, her heart pounding wildly, fear and confusion swirling in her mind. Billy settled beside her, completely at ease. His smug confidence was unshaken by Jack's strange behavior, and he had no idea that a storm was brewing deep within, ready to burst forth in the most unexpected way. Slowly and deliberately, Jack's footsteps echoed from the hallway. Brittany tensed up, listening intently, her pulse quickening with each approaching step. She glanced at Billy, who appeared utterly unperturbed, as if this were just another maneuver in his string of victories. But Brittany knew Jack. At least, she thought she did. And something in his behavior today unsettled her. When the door opened, Brittany held her breath at the sight of what Jack was holding. In his hand, he held a gun, sleek and menacing. She had never seen it before, and the sight of the weapon in Jack's hand sent a wave of fear crashing over her. The atmosphere in the room plunged into a heavy silence filled with dread. Billy hesitated, then straightened up. What's the matter, Jack? He growled, trying to mask the tremor in his voice with false bravado. But Jack was no longer the man who had quietly left the room. He looked at Billy with a cold, calculating gaze, as if he had already made up his mind. Now you both are going to play a game, he said in a calm tone. He spoke in a steady, emotionless voice. The winner will be the one who walks out. Brittany froze, paralyzed by his words. She had known Jack for many years and had built a life with him, but now this man seemed like a stranger, capable of anything. I beg you, Jack, she whispered. She was trembling, tears welling up in her eyes. 
You don't have to do this. Jack kept his gaze fixed on Billy, who was visibly unnerved. The balance of power had shifted, and the fear in Billy's eyes made it clear that he no longer had control. On your knees, Jack commanded, his voice lowered to a threatening growl, brooking no argument. Billy hesitated, his self-assurance evaporating as the seriousness of the situation became evident. He looked to Brittany for support, but she was equally terrified, her thoughts racing in search of an impossible escape. There was no arguing with a man standing before them with a gun in his hand. Gradually, Billy gave in, his courage collapsing under the pressure. He sank to his knees, anxiously glancing from Jack to the gun, desperately searching for a sign of mercy that wasn't there. The authority he had once wielded so easily had vanished, leaving only fear in its place. Brittany's legs buckled, and she fell to her knees beside Billy. A whirlwind of confusion and disbelief surged through her mind. The man she had thought she understood had disappeared, replaced by a figure capable of unthinkable acts. Frantically, she tried to comprehend how they had ended up in this moment, but clarity eluded her. Jack approached them slowly, still gripping the gun tightly in his hand. Every step he took was deliberate, every movement made with a chilling calculation. The room was enveloped in silence, broken only by Brittany's heavy breathing and Billy's faint gasps. Both of them understood that there was no speaking of this. No words could ease the tension. What do you want, Jack? Billy finally asked. There was desperation in Billy's voice, now reduced to a barely audible whisper. The characteristic confidence was gone, leaving behind a man gripped by fear for his life. When Jack paused, he looked at them both with an expression almost impossible to decipher. Silence hung in the air for a moment, allowing the tension to build. Then he spoke with a chilling calm. You need to understand what it means to lose everything. The weight of his words made Brittany's heart sink. This wasn't just about revenge. It was about destruction, about taking away everything they had once cherished. She searched Jack's eyes for any hint of the man she once loved, but found only a soul-chilling resolve. The nightmare was just beginning, and there was no escape. As Brittany knelt beside Billy, the reality of their situation crashed down on her. The quiet, dependable husband she had once known had transformed into an unrecognizable figure. A figure ready to unleash a terrifying vengeance. It felt as though the room had closed in around her, making every breath more difficult. With predatory grace, Jack moved among them, never releasing his grip on the gun. His voice dripped with venom, a tone Brittany had never encountered before. You see, Billy, he began, his words laced with contempt. You thought you could take everything from me, my job, my wife, my honor and dignity, but you failed to consider one crucial detail. He paused, fixing a tense gaze on Billy. I have nothing left to lose. A palpable silence settled over the room. Billy, who had always been so self-assured, now struggled to regain his composure. And when he finally spoke, his voice had turned into a hoarse whisper. Jack, we need to talk about this. You don't need to do anything drastic. But Jack was beyond listening. He wasn't open to arguments, nor was he interested in mercy. I'm not here to talk, he declared. His tone was almost emotionless, which only intensified the terror. This is about the truth. We must strip away all the lies to reveal what lies beneath them. After a pause, he let his words sink in. Now, we're going to play a little game. As Jack continued, Brittany felt her heart race. His calm demeanor sharply contrasted with the horror of his words. The game is simple, he said, stalking them like a true predator. One of you will walk out of here alive, and the other will not. It's simple, isn't it? You'll take turns revealing the truth about each other. The more painful, the better. The more honest, the better. Brittany felt the room tilt as she tried to grasp Jack's intentions. This wasn't just an act of revenge. It was an assault on their very being. It wasn't enough for Jack to just end their lives. He intended to destroy them first by exposing all the ugly, hidden truths they had tried to keep buried. Billy was the first to crack. Desperation was etched on his face as he turned to Brittany. Brittany has been sleeping with other men, he cried out, his voice trembling. She didn't just sleep with me. She's a liar, Jack. 
Listen, she doesn't love you. She never loved you. The words hit Brittany like a physical blow. Her breath caught, and tears welled up in her eyes. That's a lie, she insisted, her voice shaking with fear and urgent need. I made a mistake, but I never stopped loving you, Jack. Please, you have to believe me. Jack's expression remained frozen, devoid of any warmth. The man she once knew seemed like a distant memory. There was no hint of emotion on his face, no sign that her words had any effect. His eyes were as cold as ice, and with a simple gesture, he motioned for her to continue. Then he gave a command. Brittany's mind raced, desperately searching for something, anything, that could save her. Her thoughts were chaotic, but one idea stood out clearly. Billy has been stealing from the company, she said, her voice quivering with tension. He's been using his position to launder money and cover it up. He's a real fraud. Billy's face contorted with rage, his eyes narrowing as he prepared to strike back. But before he could utter a word, Jack silenced him with a sharp motion of his gun. That's enough, Jack said in an unyielding tone. The tension in the room was palpable, the atmosphere thick with fear and hostility. Turning, Jack looked at them both with an inscrutable expression. Now you both have a choice to make. Either you point the gun at each other, or I decide for you. His words hung heavily in the air, like a grim sentence. Exchanging glances, Brittany and Billy felt the crushing weight of the ultimatum. Everything they had done, lies, betrayal, the affair, had led to this moment. The realization was suffocating. Now they were just pawns in Jack's ruthless game, with all the cards in his hands. As Brittany looked at the gun, her hands began to tremble, and the thought of the impossible decision she had to make raced through her mind. She never imagined it would come to this, that their web of deceit would spiral into such a twisted, deadly confrontation. But as Jack loomed over them, the harsh truth became inescapable. I beg you, Jack, she whispered, barely able to breathe. Please, don't do this. But Jack remained silent stepping back with the gun still in his hand, waiting to see what they would do. The nightmare had only just begun, and there was no escaping it. The atmosphere in the room was tense as Jack placed the gun on the floor between Brittany and Billy. It gleamed menacingly with cold metal, a stern reminder of the choice they had to make. Jack stepped back, his gaze fixed on them both. Go ahead, he said, his voice unnaturally calm. Who wants to live? And who wants to die? Tears filled Brittany's eyes as she reached for the gun, her hand shaking uncontrollably. She screamed inside that she wanted to grab it, to end this nightmare, but it felt as if she were wading through thick mud. Before she could reach the weapon, Billy lunged forward, roughly shoving her aside. With a frenzied determination, he snatched the gun and pointed it at Jack, his face contorted with fear and rage. You're insane, Jack! Billy shouted, his voice trembling. I refuse to play your cruel game. His hand trembled on the trigger, bearing the full weight of his choice. Jack's hand remained steady, a cold smile playing at the corners of his mouth. Are you really ready to go through with this, Billy? He mocked, amusement tinged in his tone. Pull the trigger, and you'll doom yourself. The police will be here soon. And do you really think they'll take your side? The side of a man caught in an affair with his colleague's wife? The side of a man who embezzled money from his own company? Billy's hand barely quivered. All the bravado he had clung to throughout the evening began to dissolve in the face of Jack's cold logic. His situation was becoming inescapable. He was trapped, outsmarted by the very man he had wronged. The brazen, confident boss who had stormed into this room was gone leaving behind a desperate, frightened man, struggling to find a way out. Jack, please calm down. Brittany's voice was barely a whisper as she crawled towards him, her eyes filled with despair. You don't have to do this. We can fix everything. We can start over. A fleeting thought crossed Jack's mind that she had seen the man she once adored, the one who had been her steadfast support for so many years. However, that glimmer of hope vanished as quickly as it had appeared. Your choice has already been made, Jack replied, his voice cold. Now, you must face the consequences. Sensing the finality in Jack's tone, Billy aimed the gun at Brittany. Desperation was etched on his face, 
and his voice trembled as he spoke. You brought us to this, Brittany. It's because of you that I decided it was worth it. You have only yourselves to blame. As the barrel of the gun pointed directly at her, Brittany's eyes widened in horror. Please, Billy, I beg you, she pleaded, her voice quivering. We are both guilty. But Billy was beyond reason. Mortal fear and the weight of his own defeat had pushed him to the edge. Rational thought had abandoned him. He was consumed by the instinct to survive, regardless of the consequences. My love, I beg you. Jack's firm and authoritative voice cut through the tension. Do you really think killing her will save you? Go ahead, pull the trigger. But remember, you won't leave here alive. Billy hesitated. He glanced back and forth between Jack and Brittany, and Jack's words weighed heavily on his chaotic mind. The conclusion was inevitable. If he took Brittany's life, Jack would undoubtedly take his. The gun gradually lowered in his hand as his resolve crumbled. Tell me, what do you want from us, Jack? Billy whispered, his bravado evaporated. What do you want from me? Jack's eyes were as steely as metal, devoid of any compassion. I despise you both, Jack sneered. But I'm offering you one last chance. Drop the gun, Billy. Let's see what kind of man you really are. Billy's grip on the weapon loosened, and the weight of his own powerlessness pressed down on him. He dropped the gun to the floor, and his shoulders slumped in defeat. Brittany gasped, and a flicker of hope sparked within her. Maybe they could emerge from this ordeal battered, but alive. But Jack wasn't finished yet. As Billy looked up, a wave of terror washed over him. His face was inscrutable but the darkness in his eyes conveyed a chilling message. It seemed that the semblance of mercy they had earned was about to be shattered. This game was far from over. Do you know what's most terrifying about all of this? Jack spoke in a low voice, each word laced with a restrained fury that sent chills down Brittany's spine. It's not the betrayal, the lies, or even the humiliation. It's that you both thought I was weak. You believed you could do this to me and walk away unscathed. His gaze locked onto Billy, who instinctively took a step back. All color drained from Billy's face. The confidence he had displayed earlier was gone, leaving only raw, unadulterated fear. Please, Jack, Billy stammered, his voice trembling with desperation. I'm sorry. I'll do whatever you want. Just don't, please. He didn't have time to finish his plea before the shot rang out. There was a thunderous roar a sharp explosion that filled the room and echoed in Brittany's ears long after the shot had been fired. Billy crumpled to the floor, his eyes wide with disbelief. A look of disbelief crossed his face as blood began to pool around his lifeless body, staining the once pristine carpet that Brittany had meticulously cared for. A scream of horror tore from Brittany's throat. She clapped her hands over her mouth in a futile attempt to muffle the sound. Fear gripped her paralyzing her as she tried to comprehend the reality of what had just happened. The man with whom she had shared so many stolen moments, who had promised her excitement and passion, now lay lifeless at her feet. Turning to her, Jack's inscrutable expression stood in stark contrast to the storm of emotions raging within Brittany. He was never meant to leave here alive, he stated flatly, his voice devoid of emotion. Brittany trembled her knees buckling under her as the full weight of the situation crashed down on her. Jack, I beg you, forgive me. I'm willing to do anything for you. Just don't kill me, she pleaded, her voice shaking with fear. She spat out the words in a frantic rush, but Jack's gaze remained fixed on her, and the gun was still heavy in his hand. Brittany, you made your choice. You chose him over me. As a result, you decided to betray our marriage of 39 years to throw away everything we had for a fleeting thrill. Tears streamed down Brittany's cheeks as she collapsed to her knees, despair clawing at her heart. I was wrong, Jack. I see that now. Please don't do this. I can change. I'll do anything you ask. Please just don't kill me, she begged, her voice trembling. For a fleeting moment, Jack's demeanor softened, and the man she once knew appeared before her. But years of torment, Constant humiliation and deep betrayal were too heavy for him to forgive. He couldn't leave her, not after all she had done to him, not after the chaos she had brought into his life. Despite his thirst for revenge, he couldn't pull the trigger. He was stopped by the love he once felt for her, 
now buried beneath layers of rage and pain. Lowering the gun, he dropped his hand, and his expression hardened once more. Get out, he ordered, his tone cold as ice. Out of this house, out of my life, and never come back. I won't hold back if I see you again. Brittany needed no second invitation. She scrambled to her feet and ran, her heart pounding as she fled the house, too terrified to look back. The cold wind hit her like a slap, but she kept moving forward, trying to process the nightmare she had just escaped. Behind her, the house that once felt like home had turned into nothing more than a ghostly memory, a place she would never return to. Inside, Jack stood alone. The weight of his actions bore down on him more heavily than he had anticipated. The eerie silence enveloped the house after Brittany's departure. In the living room, Jack stood frozen, gripping the gun with which he had just wounded Billy. Billy was breathing heavily and unevenly, staring at Jack. The adrenaline that had driven Jack forward was dissipating, giving way to a suffocating sense of dread. The gravity of his actions began to sink in. He had crossed an irreversible line. The man who was once his employer and the lover of his wife now lay wounded on the carpet. The enormity of what he had done pressed on him like a stone. Sinking into a nearby chair, he unclenched his fingers from around the gun. The weapon fell from his hand with a dull thud, but Jack barely noticed the sound. His mind was blank, empty where anger and adrenaline had once raged. He felt a profound emptiness, as if all his essence had been drained, leaving only a hollow shell. Time seemed to stretch infinitely. The house was wrapped in silence, interrupted only by the faint, almost sleepy sounds of the night. Jack sat in a fog of disbelief and regret, unaware of how long he had been there. Then suddenly, the silence was pierced by the wail of sirens, growing louder with each heartbeat. The harsh reality of the approaching law enforcement forced him to face the relentless truth. The sirens wail, the flashing lights, the inevitable questions. They were all closing in, and there was no escaping them. He closed his eyes, trying to shut out the noise, the lights, and the world outside. The distant cries of the sirens grew nearer, mingling with the crackle of police radios and the soft sound of footsteps approaching the house. What once felt like home now appeared as a crime scene, forever tainted by the violence that had unfolded within its walls. Jack rose to his feet, his movements stiff and robotic. Surveying the room, he absorbed the chaos left in the wake of the night's events, the bloodstains, the overturned furniture, and the scattered fragments of his once stable life. What had once been a refuge now stood as a testament to his downfall. Outside, red and blue lights flashed against the windows, casting anxious shadows on the walls. Jack felt the inevitability of what was to come. The police would soon storm the house, bringing with them the burden of justice, probing questions, and the consequences of his choices. It became clear to him that the life he once knew was gone, irreversibly altered in one horrific night. At the first knock echoing through the house, Jack's heart sank. The weight of his final decision bore down on him. He had crossed an irreversible threshold, and there was no escaping the consequences. The sounds of the sirens grew even louder, sharpening the intensity of the moment. He tensed, bracing himself for the confrontation ahead, fully aware that he could no longer evade the truth of his actions. And so, when the police finally burst through the door, Jack stood ready, raising his hands in surrender. The officers moved quickly, assessing the situation. Jack's expression was a mask of neutrality, but inside, his thoughts churned in a whirlwind of emotions. The game was over, and the consequences were inevitable. In the end, there was no victor, only devastation and hopelessness. My friend, and this is the end of the story. If you liked this story, then put your royal like and subscribe to the channel. May the force be with you.